Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we're going to start tonight with the weather. Exact Track 4D radar right now. Just a little there, but we've seen rain moving on and off through the whole day, and we've got more rain chances now as we know how to make our way into and through the weekend. So now we're going to see exactly what happens after that. Let's get over to Brian Sherman. He's in for. Hey there, Karen and Devin. Good Friday evening, everyone. A soggy start to the day, but Exact Track 40 radar drying things out here at 5 o'clock tonight after those umbrellas have come in handy most of the day, but don't put it away just yet. We are going to keep a few showers under the forecast heading into the rest of the evening and overnight hours tonight. A beautiful picture over downtown Detroit. That sunshine really getting through that cloud cover and warming us up close to 80. We're sitting at 79 here in Detroit. Also 79 over in Ann Arbor. 78 as you're checking in with us over in Pontiac and 72 cooler rain cooled as you work up into Port Huron. Our frontal boundary moving right through the region this afternoon. There goes that first round of rain well off to the northeast into Canada, but this low pressure system of Wisconsin, that's going to keep us on the active side of the forecast as we look ahead into the entire weekend. So for tonight, we'll go mostly cloudy and isolated shower possible down to right around 70 by midnight tonight. And after those rain and storm chances roll out for the weekend, we've got another dry stretch on the Way looking ahead into next week. I'll break down when that umbrella comes in handy, especially for the Woodward Dream Cruise this weekend. The details in your complete 41 forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, yes, let's talk about that Dream Cruise weather. A little bit tricky, but that is not going to stop the thousands of people from lining up on Woodward to catch the Woodward Dream Cruise. It takes more than that. The cruise officially is just on Saturday, but of course it's been ramping up all week long. Let's get to Sean Lay live along Woodward with Morris. Sean. Guys, Brian, spot on with the forecast. Yeah, there was rain earlier. No one cared. It's Dream Cruise. Now, check this out. We're looking live here just north of 13 between 14 here in Royal Oak on Woodward. The official Dream Cruise is 9 tomorrow morning to 9 tomorrow evening. But don't tell that to anyone. This has been going on all week, and this is Dream Cruise Eve. Why did you fly from Philadelphia to the Dream Cruise? You know what? Bucket list thing. Let me get out here. Jump on the plane, see it happen. I'm a car guy, love the old metal. Had to be in the mix of it. Dream Cruise Eve, the official real deal, isn't until tomorrow. Drone 4 cruising high above. Carlo Arjona cruised in from Philly and is not worried about a rainy Royal Oak. I'm going to put in a call upstairs for some clear weather, clear skies, and let everyone have a good, safe time out here. Motor City, heavy metal, makes everyone hungry. Cruising, great food goes together. So we're with Glenn. Glenn is with Sorokis here in Royal Oak. Let's go over to Glenn. Glenn, what kind of week, what kind of day are you preparing for? What kind of week are you preparing for? Oh, a terrific day. It's going to be nonstop walk-ups only. We're going to be busting out chicken tenders all day. You make everything to order, so how are you prepared for that? Because everything is fresh. You make everything to order. Everything's fresh. We keep it going nonstop. It's really, really good. And you're ready for these crowds? Oh, yeah. We've been preparing all week. Let's go back to our Eye in the Sky Drone 4, searching for the best seat in the house. That goes to Marty Hunt. One man, one tent, one dream cruise. I always wanted to come over here, right? And now I want to come every year. That's Marty from Portage. One man, one folding chair, one tent. He's got the best seat in the house. Okay, looking live here. This is northbound M1 Dream Cruise. All right, now we've got the regular cars here. Just a minute ago, we had incredible classics coming through. Just hang on with us for a second because Devin, Karen, Brian, I want you to pick out your favorite classic coming our way. The only thing I see right now is that Ooh, little like one, that a Thunderbird. <laughs> Well, you're a Jeep girl. I am. Yes. Karen's a Jeep girl. We know that. It's awesome. Ah, uh, we got Thunderbird here. One of my Ooh. favorites. I had a 79. That was my very first one. $2,000. It was amazing. Uh, let's see. Anything else coming? Okay, so we got a, what's that down there? Devin, is that an Oldsmobile? The, what is it? A Cadillac coming our way? The blue or black one? Oh, those and are cool rides, yeah. I'm taking up the yeah. producer's time. He's going to be very mad. Six o'clock, guys. Dream rides at Dream Cruise. It'll fill your heart. Join me at six. Good deal. It does always. It, it, Saturday. Nobody listens to the official schedule. They're already on it. Yeah, you got it. All right, John. Saturday. That's right. Yeah, that's right. By the way, we do have an update to an issue that we've been following really closely over the past few years. Enbridge Energy lost its battle for a rehearing in the U.S. Court of Appeals. So the company is locked in a legal battle with the state of Michigan. The state wants to shut down Enbridge's Line 5. That's the crude oil pipeline that runs through the middle of the state and the Great Lakes. The state wants its case heard in state court.
Enbridge says it belongs in federal court. Today, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals denied Enbridge's request for a rehearing, so the case will stay at the state level. Now, I follow the developments with Line 5 really closely, so if you're interested, see my investigative reporting and the full statements from both Enbridge Energy and Michigan's Attorney General about today's decision on the homepage of ClickOnDetroit.com. Today, the man convicted of murdering two-year-old Winter Cole Smith learned he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison. Rashad Trice abducted the little girl from her home in Lansing, and her body was found days later in an alley in Detroit. Will Jones, live with more on the story. Uh, Will, the little girl's family got to speak directly to him. Devin and Karen, the prosecutor read some statements from some family members today. Winter Cole Smith's paternal grandfather was the only relative to speak in court today, and at times he needed to pause to regain his composure. Was that a no? Yes, no. Okay, thank you. I just have to be clear for the record. Before receiving his sentence in Ingham County, Rashad Trice chose not to express any remorse for killing two-year-old Winter Cole Smith. Back in July 2023, Trice kidnapped Winter in Lansing after stabbing and sexually assaulting her mother, who he had been in a relationship with. Police arrested Trice in St. Clair Shores just hours later, and they found Winter's body days later in a Detroit alley. She had been strangled to death. Last month, Trice pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and first-degree criminal sexual conduct. In court today, the prosecutor read statements from Winter's relatives. Winter's paternal grandfather, Almont Smith, read a statement from Winter's father. Afterward, Smith shared his own emotions. What I've heard people, statements, saying a coward, a monster, killer. To me, you're none of, you meant none of that. To me, there's no word that describes that describe you. Smith says he prays that Trice gets the help that he needs. I learned that you can't hate nobody. I don't hate you, but I hate what you've done. As again, you took somebody special from me, my only grandchild. The judge sentenced Trice to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Winter's grandfather wrapped up his remarks by apologizing for an outburst during a previous hearing. The judge said he did not need to apologize. Some family members opted not to come today because of the pain that it would cause. We are live. Will Jones, Local 4. It's an awful story. All right, Will. Vice President Kamala Harris is going to lay out her plans for her first 100 days in office, all focusing on cutting costs for Americans. It's the first time she's discussed her policies. Meanwhile, her opponent, the former president, Donald Trump, says her plans will hurt the economy rather than help it. Bree Jackson in Washington with more. Bree. Vice President Kamala Harris referenced her own middle class upbringing while rolling out her economic vision. Harris says she wants to build what she calls an opportunity economy where everyone has a chance to succeed. Her proposal includes building three million new homes and passing a federal ban on price gouging on food. Vice President Kamala Harris detailing her economic plan, if elected president, saying driving down cost is a top priority. I will take on the high costs that matter most to most Americans. Speaking to supporters in battleground state North Carolina, Harris proposing tax cuts for middle class Americans, expanding the child tax credit to provide $6,000 to families with newborns, and a federal ban on corporate price gouging in the food and grocery industry. My plan will include new penalties for opportunistic companies that exploit crises and break the rules. Political experts say delivering on campaign promises is a challenge for any candidate. This is something that speaks to the concerns of everyday Americans who are worried about putting food on their table and what it cost three years ago. But still, that's very, very different than getting a law. And even the law there would have loopholes. Former President Trump is convinced his political opponent's policies would hurt the economy. A radical left person wants to put price controls all over the place, which will end up driving up your prices, not down your prices. Trump says his goal is to lower energy prices by reducing regulations and allowing drilling on new land. I always say we have more liquid gold under our feet, more 
than any other nation. Polls show a majority of voters trust Trump over Harris when it comes to the economy. The vice president is seeking to close that gap as she lays out her economic vision on the campaign trail and at the Democratic National Convention next week. And both campaigns are heading to Pennsylvania this weekend, hoping to win over voters in that critical battleground state. In Washington, Bree Jackson, Local 4.